They come with chrome and steel to test fate's fickle wheel. Metal meets metal, eight robots compete. The aim of the game to bash, buckle Three, and beat. Here on Heat K of Robot Wars! Let the wars begin! Only one machine can survive. The question is how as we thrash them and bash them as only we can. We booby trap to make them fly, devilish demons to make them cry. And if anyone misses a trick, the house robots will sweep up. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. Oh, this is Robot Wars, the Seventh Wars, which is proving to be one of the most explosive wars yet. And it's not surprising, because this year, the robots are fighting for a cash pot of over £20,000. Yes, it's made them more determined, more aggressive, and more destructive than ever before. And have you picked yourself a winner yet? Well, there's a lot more robots to come, so watch this space as we let the wars begin. In our first fight, look out for the number 12 seeds Bulldog Breed, let off their leash to growl and prowl. We've new machines in Mantis and Jabba, Infernal Contraption 2, will the Bulldog still go through? Then in our second fight, the experienced Velociripper will cut loose. And as Hard and Cat 3 let off steam, T-Rex will have to dodge the hammer blows. From Balderton in Nottinghamshire, Mantis. New to Robot Wars, they better start praying. What does Mantis do? It's, uh, it'll actually, this beak here is in a raised position and we can drive under the others, hopefully. The beak comes down and we can actually lift them off the ground. You're basically hoping to either drop them in the pit. In the pit, over the side, feed them to the house robots, toast them, whatever. As the hydraulic crush and lift capability parading its victims before its peers like a true gladiator, quite quick, but the exoskeleton can be hooked and lifted and the tyres are too exposed. From Washington in Lincolnshire, Infernal Contraption. KO'd in the first round of the last wars. You've got two independent wheel modules, they're made out of sewage pipe. But instead of poo inside, you've got motor battery and speed controller. Oh, I just had a horrible image in my head there. What? Of oh, motors and stuff? Oh, get rid of it. Then in the middle, you've got the weapon, which is a 1200 RPM drop. And this sort of swings about and hits things. So that's nasty. So this runs along and that yeah. bounces. Yeah. Basically, that's hitting it. things. You got it, yeah. The two large wheels contain the motors, batteries, etc. Between them, the large, vicious spinning disc controls. Sometimes a bit random, though. Infernal to eternal bot damnation, I fear. From Cannock in Staffordshire, Bulldog Breed. Seeded 12 after reaching two previous heat finals. There's been a lot of seeds go out in the Seventh Wars. That's right, they must be frightened of us. <laughs> They're out before you get into the ring. That's right. Bulldog's got some more pedigree this year. It's had a lot more fights. Uh, it's a lot more experience. I drive, might drive him into the arena, but I'm sure he's on his own when he gets out there, because he don't listen to me. As a hard-hitting, full-pressure flipper this time, tough, aggressive, loads of attitude, 10 miles an hour, top speeds, one centimetre ground clearance. You'd be barking mad to get in the way of this one. From Top Valley in Nottinghamshire, Jabber. Newcomers to Robot Wars, will they jab, will they duck, or will they dive? What does Jabber do, then? It rotates, rotating uh, bar blade on the front, and it, it'll run both ways, and spikes on the rear, and it's heavily armoured and very quick. What is your tactics, weapons man? Oh, I've got a big thumb for a big switch. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the weapon spinning as much as I can. He does the driving, I'll keep the weapon spinning. Low body, runs both ways, when tipped, has a 4.5 kilo, 1,500 RPM spinning blade and rear spikes. Very fast, heavily armoured, but a 10 centimetre ground clearance could be lower, I think. Roboteers, stand by. To the teams then, Infernal Contraption there on the left, Jonathan Peel, like Captain Duncan Champensley leads Mantis on the right. 
Bulldog Breed on the left, the Summerfields, and Jabber on the right, Kevin Graham Askew is the captain. Sergeant Bash is in the arena for the house robots. And so is Mr. Psycho. Three, two, one. On paper, then, you have to look for Bulldog Breed, the seated machine, and quick to the arena centre there to gain control of the centre as Infernal Contraption bounces into Jabber and then spins away, is turned. That's OK. They can run both sides up. The machine that was made out of sewer pipes. Mm. Bulldog Breed has a sniff. And a little push into the CPZ. That's the corner patrol zone where the house robots love to patrol and they were nearly out then and Jabber has been picked up very easily by Mantis. This is what they said they hope to do, the Mantis team. Duncan Champagne, Jonathan Liversidge and Chris Barber pick a machine up and dump it out of the arena very quickly and Bulldog Breed is slamming in here. Right into Infernal Contraption, bounces away, showing good durability. Sergeant Bash is in there, the ref bot, top of your picture and still Mantis can't finish Jabber off. So we know they can clutch and pick a machine up off the arena floor, but can they dump? Can they release a machine? Bulldog Breed slamming in to Mantis. Mantis may be a little bit too pensive. Now, what's happened here? The three of them have got slammed in together, jammed in together. Infernal Contraction came bashing in and is away. What is Mantis going to do eventually with Jabba? Drop it is the answer. Jabba's spinning blade. Still working, Mick Orm is the weapons operator of the team. Slowly turning there in Sergeant Bash's jaws, <laughs> Infernal Contraption running every which way, but loose at the moment. Jabba, I think, has impaired mobility against Serena Cyborgs. I don't think Jabba's going to get out from there. Infernal Contraption certainly is. Mantis has done enough for me in terms of aggression and style, should it go to a judge's decision. And they're the Mantis team, we can see them from behind. Bulldog Breed slams into them again. Very experienced machine. Oh, what's happened there? Something's come out of Bulldog Breed. Look like mesh or webbing of some sort. Certainly came out of Bulldog, but there it is, look. You can see it now. They should not have any webbing or, or, or mesh or net inside their machine. I don't know what it is. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now, but it's trailing across the arena floor. It can snag spinners and blades. That's why they are not allowed. It can snag onto the angle grinders. Bulldog Breed still pushing away, still slamming away, but I'm sure the judges are going to have a word to say about this. What is that tangled underneath there? It's right in the, the gizmo of Bulldog Breed, in the inner. Goes to a judge's decision. This is going to be interesting. Fantastic battle, bruising encounter, but under WARS rules, I'm sure I'd spotted an illegal weapon in that match. Let's look at the highlights. Yeah, certainly something was amiss. Not at this point, Bulldog Breed into Infernal Contraption. Good attack, point scored there, good style, good control, good aggression. Mantis had done well against Jabba, well enough, I think, at this stage. Bulldog Reed, not particularly sensible in there. Maybe marked down. And that's the moment of controversy. What was that that came out? It's still hanging loose. It could count against Bulldog Breed. That could be very, very vital. Well, the judges still haven't made a ruling. Join me after the break. Find out what happens. After the break, another terrific first round fight. We'll be slamming into sidings, steaming through like an express, suffering the odd derailment. We'll be hammering like a piston and railroading two more to defeat. If you've just joined us, we're still awaiting the judge's decision on a very controversial first fight when Bulldog Breed, the seeds, may have been caught using an illegal web-like meshing. The judges are still musing. Welcome back to Robot Wars. Before the break, we had a fascinating yet controversial fight. However, the judges have given Bulldog Breed the benefit of the doubt 
They go through along with Mantis! The device in question, it was buried within the body of the robot, yeah. designed to protect 1,200 pounds worth of cylinders, which we've had damaged in the past. Mm. It was inside the body, not external. Mm. But I wanted to interfere with another robot, would have put it all over the outside. Yeah. But in fact, we, it became detached, which anything can. Most robots here use bungees to return the clipper on. That could be interpreted as an entanglement weapon if we wanted to, really. Yeah, but in this instance, you were actually fighting with a spinning robot, and the, the tactics of a net could, in fact, stop the spinner. So, but as I say, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Official warning, don't Except use it again. Except this is an official warning, Derek. Yes. You've heard the story. Um, it sounds like a bit of um, an accident, but it is an official warning. Rules are rules, they have to be upheld. Exactly. All right, thank you very much, Derek. <laughs> Ooh, really. skinny your teeth, eh? From Kampenhout in Belgium, hard. Fought in the Netherlands Championships, lost in its heat, though. Your robot is called hard. How hard is he? Uh, it's 4 millimetre RVS steel, so it will be quite hard to pinch through. What is your biggest fear in the arena? Well, somebody flipping us out. We've seen the fights, uh, the, four, the other fights, and the, the big problem is to stay in the arena. Very small 4 millimetre stainless steel armour with a full pressure flipper drives upside down. The two wheels are exposed, so hard as nails, twice as easy to hammer. From Clifton in Nottinghamshire, Velociripper. They've fought in three previous wars with little success, though. Trevor and Emily, I'm sure I've seen you two somewhere before. Yeah, last week. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen you. You have got another robot in the Seventh Wars, haven't you? Yes, it's Mighty Mouse. It is Mighty Mouse. Now, what have you got here for us? This one is an improvement on Mighty Mouse. It's the same thing. It's got rear-wheel drive and front-wheel steering. But this time I've been experimenting with a flipper. Fast front wheel steering, electronic differential, dinosaur head shape, front flipper, self rights, thick aluminium in a box construction, but a fiberglass lid. What, with our reputation? From Wellow in Northamptonshire, T Rex. Newcomers to Robot Wars here to wreck the old dinosaurs of the arena. What is your weak point on T Rex? Uh, our receiver. We have uh, an inner steel core here. Mm -hmm. um, so all the stuff that can be damaged is inside. The only thing we can't put in there is the receiver. But nothing we can do about that. That's a bit bad, isn't it? Yeah. Because if the receiver goes down, you've got no control. Absolutely. A bit bad. It's like an aeroplane without wings, basically. A metre in diameter with eight rotating teeth. It's flat, it resembles a large blade, but the receiver is exposed. I can't believe this. From Adelston in Surrey, Cap 3. In their fifth war, it's never spectacular though. You're the weapons girl, George. Yeah. Uh, what are your um, tactics once you get into the arena? Just fire the weapon as many times as possible. We have about 50 hits on the weapon, so it's just fire it as many times as possible and try and hit something. You've got 50 hits? 50 hits, yeah. That is a very powerful weapon. Oh, yes. <laughs> Has an aluminium body and polycarbonate base with all the weaponry mounted on a central spine. Strong armour, but has been as mean as a kitten in mittens in the past. Roboteers, stand by. To the team's then, Velociripper there on the left, the right family hard on the right. Get Kayet, captains them. T Rex on the left hand side there, Graham and Anna Lawrence, Graham Farker. And Cat 3, basically the Williams family in the arena for the house robots, Mr. Psycho. And also Cassius Chrome. Three, two, one. Activate. Now, just watch out for Hard. Moving there into the spotlight, they've already qualified for the World Championships in this series. And it's a durable little machine. Velociripper is colourful. Cat 3 is experienced. Velociripper trundles up. Oh dear, T Rex takes a hammer blow from Mr. Psycho and has to get away from there. We know that the control is exposed, but they're spinning meanly. Cat 3 is impaled on the arena floor and will be in trouble there. There's Hart underneath Velociripper, slamming Velociripper against the arena wall. That's good work by the Belgian 
team. They're a mean looking bunch as well if you get to see a close up of them. Velociripper in reverse, spinning away, piggybacks up on hard. Great speed, Velociripper, up to 15 miles an hour across the arena floor. Just saw there a close up of the Cat 3 team, Julianne Williams it was. Cassius Crone comes steaming through. Hard, good little turn away. Velociripper in on the red pod, is that allowed, sir? Yes, sir. That's terrible, sir. Hard, pushing in on Velociripper once more. This is a terrific fight, isn't it? Once again, we've got four very mobile robots as the fight trundles on. Not too sure about T-Rex in it. No, I am now. Look at that. The spinning blade. That can cause major problems to Velociripper's fiberglass lid. Fiberglass in what is basically a snake pit, a flame pit, a den of thieves. Are they sure? They're pushing there the pit release button. Good work by Trevor Wright, the designer and builder. Spinning again, T-Rex trying to cause damage on hard. The pit has been released. Oh, they're very, very close. T-Rex needs to get away and does so. Oh, 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 across the arena floor. No problems with the control. We feared that. This is a really good fight. Very even, very open, and one of the best of Robot Wars the Seventh Wars thus far. Pilota Ripper <laughs> just dodged the hammer. Cat 3 seems to have lost the plot a wee bit, but is okay now. Oh, Velociripper on its side. Right just at the right moment. Down comes Cat 3's axe, but there's no axe point, I don't think, though. We'll have to have another look. No axe point, look on Cat 3. That's, that's wasted weaponry, and down goes T-Rex. The first of the brave competitors to four. Which means two from these three will survive. Is Velociripper moving just suddenly... The pace has got a lot slower because I think Velociripper have run themselves to a standstill. Hard pushing again. Velociripper down! Hard and Cat 3 survive. But with what damage, I wonder? What a fantastic fight! A right royal rumble. Two robots in the pits gives us two clear winners. Cat 3 and Hard, they go through! Two terrific contests we've had so far. Hard and Cat 3 survived their fight then to reach round two of Heat K, and this is how they'll line up. Bulldog Breed against Hard, Mantis against Cat 3. Back to you though, Craig, for details of our next special event. Now, some robots weren't quite heavy enough for the main event, but they've been battling it out in the pits, and we are ready tonight to give you the middleweight final! From Edinburgh, in Scotland, Typhoon. A rotating cone with four claw-shaped hammer cutters on the side there. From Hemel Hempstead, in Hertfordshire, Phoenix. A low wedge with a lifting arm. The two teams there, then Phoenix on the left-hand side, Carl McBride and his kids, and Typhoon on the right-hand side, Edinburgh Air Cadets team. From Lewis, in East Sussex, Steel Sandwich. That's a spinning disc weapon. John Frizzell with little JJ and Zaki there as well, eight and six. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for this middleweight contest, Dead Metal with the pincers and serrated saw and growler. Three, two, one. This for the Robot Wars, seventh Wars middleweight championship then. And uh, Steel Sandwich in the center of the arena look purposeful, trying to chase after Typhoon which has won our last two middleweight competitions on Robot Wars. And they buff it there into the front of Phoenix, I think it was, and spin away again. Look control, don't they? Being chased by Steel Sandwich. Steel Sandwich and Phoenix, similar in looks. Steel Sandwich with the red sort of squash tomato logo on the front. And cross stripe, as opposed to Phoenix with a straight red lifting arm. Bottom of your picture there, just in front of the ref bar. 
Now, the name of the game, boys, is Contact in Robot Wars. I don't know if anyone told you, but... Uh... <sighs> Wait, not when it's over. Ah, red pop. Well done. <sighs> On we go, then. And back to the thrill of the chase. To the thrill of the chase. Typhoon spinning. There's been a lot more adventurous than this in the past. Oh, a lovely pirouette. Dances like Fred Astaire. This is Robot Wars. A little bit of a cotton thrust. That's better. That's better. Go on. Go on. Missed. And Phoenix, I think, is about to go into those long, dark Phoenix nights. Steel Sandwich chasing Typhoon. Typhoon away. Just away from the ref bot as well. Ah, I see now. They're pensively working out an angle of attack. The sandwich that bites back. We'll wait and see as Phoenix is inexorably counted out. <laughs> Crowler awaits. <laughs> oh dear. Just saw a little Christy McBride there. She's six. Colin McBride, brother is eight. Ooh, and they won't want Phoenix to be bashed up. Meanwhile, back to the main event. Steel Sandwich and Typhoon. The two remaining sparring partners then for the middleweight contest. I'm not too sure if Steel Sandwich has both wheels fully mobile. I don't think it has, which means if Typhoon can launch a series of rams, then Steel Sandwich will be pitted. Phoenix is flipped. Great distance from the floor flipper, faced with just a middleweight machine. 42 kilos in weight, Phoenix. They had problems with the motors early on, Phoenix. That's what I was telling you about. Steel Sandwich in the end, had to go down in the pit. And Typhoon, once again, Robot Wars, the middleweight champion. Six. The Steel Sandwich is past its sell-by date. The Phoenix cannot rise from the ashes. Typhoon, they're the middleweight champions! Hey, three years in a row. Three years. You're the middleweight champions again. It's getting boring. How? What's the difference between a middleweight and a heavyweight? Is it diffi more difficult to build? Um, it's actually, a middleweight's kind of an easier version of a heavyweight mm -hmm. because you can use the same motors and batteries, it's just that everything's a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. You don't put as much in. I'll tell you one thing, it's, it's a brilliant robot, this Typhoon. Cheers. Middleweight or heavyweight. I bet they're all proud back at the squadron, aren't they? Oh, they are. Good luck, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the middleweight champions for the third time running. These are Typhoon! <laughs> Join me after the break for more carnage and chaos. Keep it here. Keep it Robot Wars. After the break, two terrific second round fights. Bulldog Breed against Hard, who don't forget are already world championship contenders. Then Mantis against Cat 3. How many of their nine lives remain? Find out after the break. If you've just joined us, you've just missed a crunching Heat K first round fight where T Rex finally got the dump and Velociripper. We're also left with the hump. Welcome back to Robot Wars. But after a brutal round one, four robots are left standing. But have they got the metal to go one on one? Craig, this is how they line up in round two. In a minute, Mantis against Cat 3. But first up, hard against the number 12 seeds Bulldog Bree. Jane's in the pits with them. You are on a yellow card. Okay. I'm just going to show the viewers on damage cam exactly okay. where the netting was. It was on those cylinders there, I believe. Yeah. These cylinders cost, I heard? £1,200. £1,200 each? No, the pair. Especially manufactured for Robo Wars. Whoa. Yes, that's why we protect them. 
You have to protect them, but yeah, um, are you, so you're not going to be using the net we in We can't the use the round. net, but we will be using other devices in the future. We're going to push the boundaries always. You have to push the boundaries. You are through the second round. Okay. Uh, on a yellow card. On a yellow card. Uh, how does it feel? Do you think you're going to uh, go further? Somebody's going to have to pay for that last one, and it may be the, our next opponent. There's uh, a lot of aggression yes. in this bulldog. Yes. It's full of pedigree and it's raring to go. Now, um, the bulldog is the number 12 seed. He's a very aggressive dog and he's in a bad mood. He's on a yellow card. Are you scared to get in there with him? Scared? If you're scared, you, won't, you don't have to be here. You don't have to be here, but no. you certainly are. And this is for a place in the final. Yeah, well, yes. Actually, we're pretty happy to finally have one of the really powerful robots against us. Because until now, every robot we were fighting against in the competition was... Uh, we always thought, yeah, we can handle him. Yeah, this is the first one we think, hmm, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a fight. The Flemish Flipper versus the English Bulldog. Good luck out there, lads. May the best robot win. Thank you. Hard. With their muscles from Brussels, can they survive? Kert Kjerts, Jan Huyen, Frank van Riet. Bulldog breed. All the experience in the world. Now attitude too. Tony Summerfield on the left drives. Robert Summerfield, his son, controls the weapons. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, we have supplied Matilda, our matriarch of mayhem. And she look neat and trim. And doesn't he look horrible? Mr. Psycho. Three. Bulldog breed to the right there with the pooch's picture on the front. In underneath hard, hard at two centimetre ground clearance. And it's quite high for Robot Wars. Flipped, but durable, coming down with a slam, but still with power and control. A sideways push on Bulldog breed to the arena side walls, but no angle grinders there or flames. Oh, and nearly out hard. I wonder what damage has been caused this time. Bulldog Breed wanted to make someone pay. And the Belgian team from Kampenhout being made to pay. And I wonder if they sustain terminal damage here in this heat, whether they'll be able to make repairs in time for the World Championships, because they are taking a mauling. To me, it is clear there is no life left in hard. Oh, <laughs> Bulldog Breed just totally missed and hit the arena sidewalk. And the audience in row D felt that. Repot's having a check. And another one. And the Summerfield boys know that they are on the verge of the heat final. Because seconds remain between them and a victory in this second melee of the night. Yep, that's it. Hard have been beaten. And now the house robots can play. Oh, Mr. Psycho, he's not the sharpest, is he? Let's be honest. He's supposed to hit the other robot and not the side of the arena. But now he has hard in his clutches. He is mighty, Mr. Psycho. Also rather clumsy. You wouldn't trust him with your best bone china, would you? Some want him pitted, some want him flipped. And onto the floor, Flipper goes hard. 99 kilos, bouncing. Like one of those pebbles you toss on the surface of the sea and it skims away. Seven, eight, nine rolls, ten maybe. They loved it. Mr. Psycho. Watched by the ref. Coming towards the ref then, I thought. And the drop zone employed. People ask us how big is Mr. Psycho. We once saw him destroy the war zone plexiglass sidewalls. He is that big and that destructive. <laughs> I'll tell you, their machine's fairly strong. The old cooker trick on top of them. Barely a scratch, but hard beaten. Down came you. Common and Garden. 
oven. Bang! It withstood it all. That really is a hard machine. Hard? More like easy. Bulldog breed. They go barking on! Well, well, well. Hard? This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Um, what happened there? We, will, uh, we have no idea. We lost control practically immediately after the first impact. It was just like over, just like that, wasn't it? Yeah, it touched us once, it was uh, done. Come all this way, and it ends in tears so quickly. Oh, two, two, two fights, uh, yeah. Are you, are you disappointed? Well, uh, we're going to go for the international if we get it repaired. Um, yeah. The outside still looks good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please raise the roof for hard. For you, I know you won the tag team once, but um, these are heady heights, aren't they? We've made the heat finals before yeah. a few times, but uh, yeah, we, 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 we're moving on. Yeah, you seeded 12. Yeah. Does that put more pressure on you? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I like to be uh, amongst the, the rabble. <laughs> uh, How come you couldn't get the other robot out of that arena? I mean, we couldn't we, get uh, underneath him. You couldn't get underneath him? No. Is your flipper powerful enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It, it, it would have put him out there. We just couldn't get underneath him. He's very, very low to the floor. If we could have done, he would have gone. Anyway, yeah. you're still here. We're still here. You're in the heat final. We're in the heat final. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, why not? Bulldogs moving on. Bulldogs moving on. Come and have a go. If you think you're hard enough, Bulldog breed! <laughs> Bulldog breathe through to the Heat K final to fight either Mantis or Cat 3. Jane is purring in the pits with them. I think we could be okay with Mantis. It's not a flipper. The other two in our Heat are flippers now, so we should be okay. It's a pincer, but the thing with Mantis, there's not much body armour on it. No, I've noticed it's very open. There's some thin polycarbonate over the wheels, but all the hydraulics are all very open, so... We should get a spike in there if we're lucky. You could get the axe right through that and disable them immediately, surely, and put them in the pit. That'll be the plan. <laughs> How are you going to deal with Cat 3? They've got a big axe and your body works pretty exposed. We're not really bothered about the axe too much, so we'll try and keep out of the way, but we can't necessarily use what we've got to effect because it's low to the ground, so we don't know whether we can get under it. But we've got other tactics. What are your other tactics? No, we're not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> The team of Duncan Champenzi, Jonathan Liversidge and Chris Barber and their tactics, uncertain. <laughs> In fact, one of them hasn't turned up. They're that uncertain. Cap three. Keith, George and Julianne Williams. Spike back on the axe. Roboteers, stand by. Now we've chucked in the arena for you here from the house robots. Once again, the hammer blower, Mr Psycho. And Matilda, raring to go. Three, two, one. Can Mantis devise a way then of picking Cat 3 off the arena floor? A 0.2 centimetre ground clearance on Cat 3, very low. Protected by the, the front scoop. Good experience, good driving. And now, because of the shape of their weaponry, grappling Mantis. I said right at the start of the programme, I thought that exoskeleton, if you like, the exposed parts of Mantis, the, the bones there, would be susceptible to a hook, a grapple. And Cat 3 has a real hold on Mantis. Now, why do they let go? That's strange. We've seen the Mantis team. Captained by Duncan Champensley, a film producer in his other life. Away from Roboteering, Cat 3 gives chase. Mantis on the arena sidewall, spinning. Ah, that's a good turn away. That was good style. Very stylish indeed. Cat 3 pursuing, so aggressive. The more aggressive of the two, perhaps, so far. What do you think? Down comes the axe blow. But uh, uh, the axe in itself is going to puncture anything on Mantis. 
They need to get a hold of Mantis and drag them to the pit or the angle grinders. What can Mantis do? Offensively pushing, lifting. We, ah, we know they can do that. Now that's interesting because Cat 3 has to self right and does it with a quick snap of the axe. Cat 3, a little bit exposed then perhaps when they come side on to Mantis. They're okay in fighting in there, in close. As the ref cam keeps a close eye on things for us. Cat 3 thought about hiding behind the ref, I think, for a moment. See the Mantis boys side by side, manoeuvring. Cat 3 manages to take a chunk out of the arena floor. See Mantis' weapon, the, the actual claw part of the weaponry isn't doing great work, but the, the hydraulic lifters are. And Cat 3 again overturned. Do they have enough? Yes, they do to self right again. Goodness, this is a tense one. Very, very tight. It's going to go to the to the judges who are far brainier than I, let's be honest. And they will decide. I like that fight. Good points early on, scored by Cat3 with the grapple. Then they let go for some reason. Having done a lot of work, it was Mantis pulling them there. Mantis driving, Mantis scoring well as the fight drew on. This is very, very close. I can't call it. Mantis perhaps at the end on top. Cat3 stylish. Well, the judges have made their decision. You know the criteria, style, control, damage, aggression. They've gone for Cat 3! <laughs> Why do you think they went for them and not you? Mm. It was close. Yeah. It was, it's just down to, uh, I think, the, the lack of damage that we can cause with our weapon. It's more of a, a removal weapon as opposed to a yeah, it's not damage really offensive, is it? It's kind of no. a defensive weapon, really. Um, so we didn't get to use it to its full potential there, unfortunately. Yeah, couldn't you push them in the pit? I kept thinking, because, you know, you weren't doing any damage or anything. I thought, get them in the pit. I was trying to, but it just didn't seem to go our way. It didn't go your way. Um, so you're coming back? Yeah, we'll be back. Any improvements? Any ch major uh, changes? There'll be one or two, but nothing major, no. No. I mean, somewhere near. It's different to the others, that's the main thing. We didn't want to just copy other people's designs, so we've come up with our own. And we like that's that. That's the thing. We're like innovation on yeah, Robot Wars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mantis! <laughs> so, um, it's cat and dog in the heat final. Yes! Uh, cat and three against Bulldog Breed. <laughs> Um, how do you think that fight went for you? You got the decision, but no fireworks. No, no, we were <coughs> kept hitting them, but they're a very good robot, very tough, so we obviously just didn't get anything vital. But the axe seems to be working OK. We're quite pleased with it. Well, the axe is working, but it's not penetrating much. It's not, no. And it keeps getting caught up in the other <laughs> robot. <laughs> That's the, the spikes on the side, yeah. But we need them to self right if we get turned over, so we, it's kind of an evil we can't do without. How do you reckon you're going to take on Bulldog Breed? What's the plan? Whoa. Um, I don't know, I think we must have used up all our nine lives no. by now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hopeful? Are you confident? They're a great robot. We just keep going until someone stops us, so, you know, yeah. we give it our best. I think we might take flying lessons. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you've got a parachute on that robot <laughs> so it comes down gently. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the great robot, great team. Let's hear it for Catherine! <laughs> Join me after the break for some real fireworks when Cat 3 go up against Bulldog Breed in the heat final. It's raining cats and dogs after the break, the heat final. Something to get your claws into. Bulldog Breed against Cat 3. No tummy tickling here. The sparks will fly and our pet basket only has room for one. Welcome back. Two robots remain. Bulldog Breed winning through to the heat final against Hard. They weren't hard enough. And Cat 3 getting their claws into Mantis. Never really letting go. Welcome back to Robot Wars. And if we're sweating, 
is because tonight the war zone's been on fire and we're now preparing for what should be an amazing heat final. The number 12 seeds Bulldog breathe there. Some might say they're lucky still to be in this competition after the earlier controversy. At my feet you see the might of Bulldog breed. How are we feeling? I'm not nervous at all. Though. Pretty confident. Pretty well, confident? Give you some air miles. No fear, it says, on the back of the robot. Have we got no fear in the pits? No fear in the pits as well. We've been there before. We've had the fear, tried that, didn't like it, so we don't have that anymore. Axe lady? Yes. George? What, where are you going to be aiming that axe? Well, I think I might try and go for the aerials. Because they're on the back, nice. you see. If we get round the back, I'm going to go for the aerials. Because I think if you take those out, it'll just go... It goes down. Yeah. It? It'll just come to a little grinding halt. But he you won't know. be barking very loud. No, he yeah. won't. He won't. No, no. So the question is, who'll taste victory and who will bite the dust? Get ready. This is the heat final. in their third heat finals. They've never won a heat final though, Tony and Robert Summerfield. The number 12 seeds. Cap three. Fighting in its second heat final. Also has never gone further. Keith, George, Julianne Williams. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots. Sir Killalot, first time we've seen him tonight. And Cassius Crowe. Three, two, one, eight. Bulldog Breed with the full pressure flipper against Cat 3's pneumatic axe. Bulldog Breed trying to get the flipper underneath Cat 3. Other robots have tried that in the past. As we've mentioned before, it has a low ground clearance to the front, although it's slightly susceptible to the side. Oh, that's a good attack by Cat 3. That's one in the eye for the Bulldog. Now, can they growl back? Bulldog Breed flips Cat 3 on its side and over. George, Julianne and Keith Williams look on. They self-right with a little bit of help, it has to be said, from the Bulldog. Not Cat and Mouse but something similar out there as they test each other out and the pit descends this for a place in the series semi-finals and big cash at stake this time in Robot Wars for the eventual champions Bulldog Breed hungry for a little bit of kitty luncheon Cat 3 spinning away there we can see Tony Summerfield that controls the Bulldog Breed and again a great flip Certainly the more aggressive of the two here, the dog. The cat, feline, athletic. But at the moment, submissive. And I don't think they're going <laughs> to... Self-right from there, but they have done. They piggybacked up on Sir Killalot. Who, with all the reflexes of a dodo, has only just realised, to be honest. Cat 3 and Bulldog Breed together. They're grimacing as they look out. They know Cat 3 has a lot of work to do. On points, Bulldog Breed must be ahead. Cat 3's got to come for the big finish, but Bulldog Breed is underneath. If they can push into the arena sidewall, Cat 3 could go. They could go. Not enough FF flippability factor from Bulldog Breed. Cat 3. It is a cat with 153 lives. Comes down and the sparks fly. As Cat 3 brought the axe down. Right on the armament of Bulldog Breed, you saw the sparks fly away. Very good heat final. It is a bitter duel which will go to a judge's decision. Nip and tuck between the cat and the dog. Who would rule the roost back at home? Who will rule the roost in the arena? The judges decide. The cat or the dog?
Let's see where the points were scored. Cat three with an assault from the weaponry. Missing. Bad marks. Bulldog Breed with a thrust and a flip. Scoring all the while. Another one. Cat three. Self-writing. Dodging. Attacking. Good stroke. Very close. Is it a nice paint job there, Mark? It is, and it hasn't been disturbed too much. We were, we couldn't tell whether the holes had been really deep or whether they were just little sort of pinpricks. So um, it's clear that there hasn't been much damage to Bulldog Breed. Well, judges have made a decision in other criteria, style, control, aggression. And damage. Now they've been down there looking at the robots, arguing with Miss Jane Middlemiss, <laughs> and they've come to a decision. They've gone for Bulldog Breed! Um, they, they were down there checking the robots for damage, and the axe really didn't really do any. Was it not good? No. no. We really couldn't good. really crank the pressure up much more, so. And it's a titanium shell, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so we made some nice sparks. Great then. sparks, yeah. fine, yeah. but great yeah. sparks. But no dents. In the battle between cats and dogs, dogs generally win anyway, don't they? They've got the bulk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Cat 3! We knew they'd improved tremendously, mm. and uh, to underestimate them would have been a serious mistake, especially with the axe, because it is powerful. Whatever we've got as armour is powerful, yeah. and uh, it could have messed up really easy. So we, we tweaked the gyro to give us a bit more jinking left and right to dodge and weave a bit. Yeah. Bob and weave, duck and dive. Duck and dive, bob and yeah. weave, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we thought that might have been it when we got them on top of Killer Lock. We thought that was two with one stone. Yeah. But uh, it didn't turn out that way. Ladies and gentlemen, great competitors, excellent robot. Let's hear it for Bulldog Breed! and dogs with metal paws but the dog had his dinner on Robot Wars bye bye coming in on next heat the number 10 seeds Behemoth big and mighty but will there be a nip in the tail of the next saga to spin through the airwaves to a TV near you